<laughs> How's everybody doing? Okay, we're going to jump right in and go into uh, part six of the same masochistic uh, pathology. And we are going to have to go into a part seven because it's still a lot more to cover before we do the self-sufficiency and then finish with this break of compatibility and incompatibility of science. Okay, so I had left off in saying that in the sadist, the anger is linked with guilt instead of atonement, right? Now, what I have, I had to uh, write this in my notes because uh, to use the cue cards, I'm almost spending one of my cue cards and they're costly. Okay, um, l first, let's begin with the definition uh, of what a, so far, I've been using the word sadomasochist to define the person in totality. Now, in part six and seven and eight, I'm going to have to separate the terms into masochist and sadist. And the different psychological modalities of each one which then gives rise to the third aspect of the relationship, which is the most pathological of human experience, which is the sadomasochist pathology. Now we are going to go into the psychology of what creates a masochist and what creates a sadist, and the anger, atonement, and guilt complex attributed to both, and how they can switch roles at any time. And then we're going to discuss in nature where we see this dynamic. Okay, the masochistic person reflects a natural innocence that creates naivete and gullibility. Now, you know the type. You have people that are like naturally very innocent, gullible, naive, either because they're young or because they haven't been exposed to the full spectrum of life. Let's say they are country boy or a country girl, never been exposed to the big city or a, a, a plethora where there are all kinds of cultures and people that come from all kinds of values that could be foreign to the simple country boy or country girl, you know? So in a situation like that, that country girl and country boy if they leave with the values of the South, which is gentle, peaceful, laid back living into the humble and tussle and rushing of money and economy and competition and all other kinds of dynamics that usually go on in a big city or in a metropolis, where I naturally have more varieties of people of different backgrounds and cultures and experiences, which then adds to the complexity of interpersonal relating and intimacy. So this person would be considered by psychologists and those in the professional fields that write extensively about this, that person, the country boy or the country girl, they will be the term a masochist. Because, not because this is something they, you know, uh, consciously put out there, is that they reflect a natural innocence and they don't understand the evils of human nature. An example, let's go back to the example that I always talk about. Uh, uh, Tina Turner and, uh, and the late, may he rest in peace, uh, Ike Turner. And like I mentioned, Ike Turner truly loved Tina Turner. He truly loved her. He was in love with her. That's no lie. That's really true. This man really loved her, heart and soul. But he had a horrible, sadistic side with having studied the life of Ike Turner myself, a Scorpio, understood why he portrayed the behavior of a monster the way he did. This poor woman who did not come from a violent background and did not come from uh, disturbances and dysfunction was a clean, pure slate, almost like an angel that fell from the sky by accident into this very tainted and blemished world. So naturally, she became easy prey. Now, maybe 
without the agency of the late Ike Turner in her life, maybe Tina Turner would not have become the great Tina Turner that we know today. Someone might have taken it down worse and destroyed her. Ike Turner didn't do that. He didn't seek to destroy her. He sought to discipline her. But the way that he did it was sadomasochistic and pathological. Like the, he had the silver tongue and hooked her. And then once she was in, the horror began. He revealed the true intentions. And now she was gripped in a sadomasochistic pathology. The horror then began for that poor girl and poor woman. No. So this is, so in, in, in that sense, the the person Tina Turner was the masochist, whom her innocence was a morsel for the sadist, who sought to make her the great potential that he saw in her. Like I mentioned in part five, but he needed to destroy that innocence in order to make her smart and savvy about about how things really roll in the music industry. Which, if you know anything about it. It's treacherous, treacherous. The music industry, and of course, Hollywood, is another institution. Oh, I bit my tongue. They don't want me to talk too much about it. That's the Illuminati, secret society stuff. But it goes on there, and horrific was, oh, Lord, Jesus. Oh, ooh, the way it happens in Hollywood, well, you know the drove with the owl. What is the? Oh, they don't want me to talk about that either. Okay, okay. I, I carry the star. I can't talk about it. But understand that these the dynamics exist, and it comes in variety of forms. The scientist sees the spirit of of potential, because we and, and that's what we call it. We call, it, we call it the spirit of potential. Once they see the spirit of potential in a person, they see to want to actualize that potential. They want to actualize that potential. And they feel that they are the ones qualified to bring it out of you. And should you not want to express your own potential? then the sadist will inflict his idea of himself onto you and expect you to be just like him. And if you refuse to do that too, then the sadist, you know, he, uh, what did I write here? He will either reflect the same image that he holds of himself onto the other person, correct? If they fail, the sadist will force the masochist to become like him. And if the masochist refuses, then the horror begins. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> let's provide another example. Uh, well, look at the situation with um, um, Chris Brown and Rihanna, which is public domain and public information. And, 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 and Chris Brown, unfortunately, from what I hear from um, Wendy Williams' show and from other shows, that he might be possibly in trouble again, you know. And I hope not. Uh, I hope this individual gets the help that he needs. But when you, but when you see him, you see and you see the face, you see someone that portrays something of someone that is very uh, set in his way and like things done a certain way and is probably an alpha type or type A personality and is a type of man that uh, they need very, they need tremendous patience and understanding. Uh, but in the meantime, or until that occurs, they're going to engage in a sadomasochistic relationship. And, uh, and, you know, and, and you, I don't have to hash out the story of the two of them, you know, and she's no longer in that type of 
uh, relationship dynamic, but the behavior traits of this fantastic pop star and musician uh, is to be questioned. You know, uh, hopefully uh, the young man will grow out of that, but it's already evident in the ego and uh, the personality that that you know a relationship with this man must be tread carefully. Okay, so that's an that's that's an example. Well, what happened when Rihanna didn't do what he wanted? He he, he turned violent. Okay, that's how these things happen. Now, let me define more closely, more carefully, the um, the psychology of a masochist. You see, a masochist has a psychological need to be needed. In fact, they live for it. They live for it. They need to be needed. Uh, an example uh, 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 of this type of uh, relationship is the Munchausen disease, where the woman purposely um, makes the child sick, brings him sometimes to the brink of death so that, that he can need her and she can then rescue him. Something as simple as taking chicken, raw chicken, and putting the juice and the blood of the chicken into a, a bunch of uh, sausages with noodles, you know, so he can get salmonella and get sick. Now she comes to his rescue. It's sick. It's pathological. But that's a sadomasochistic pathology. Munchausen is a particular type of it. Where the mother is the one that inflicts the pain to that poor child, which eventually may end up dead, depending on the need and the psychological need of the mother to be needed. Situations like that usually don't end well. And the psychological scars that can occur to these young men or women, boy, that are under the grip of a mother like that, can you imagine what they will grow up to be? And what they will do in their relationships with that person? Oh, the implication socially is huge. And that's just one example, okay? Where the uh, where the uh, where the, the 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 child is a masochist by force because of his innocence. Again, that's one of the trademarks. And the sadist wanting that child to remain in a state of neediness, so that that she can feel that her life has meaning and is whole. Because in her own life, this was cut off from her as a child. The psychological traumas have set in, and now it would take a professional to undo the damage that have been done since birth. And that's a tall glass of water. Mm -hmm. These antibiotics make me thirsty. I've already done two of these. They make you thirsty. But it's a good way to hydrate the body. Okay. So understand that uh, the sadist, he, now, the, the sadist, let's talk about the sadist for a minute. Uh, the sadist, he has anger, but the anger is linked, is linked to guilt. There's another type of sadist, and this type of sadist also has anger, but his anger is linked to atonement. So you got two types of sadists. And two psychological types that require two specific types of victims that are masochists. This is why this can be extremely complex. And they can evolve and morph and, and interchange over time. Okay. The thing is that both the same, both types of sadists will make excuses. Don't make excuses for why they are so abusive and for why they do the things that they do. They make it sound very logical. And people believe the sadists. So then the masochist becomes further disenfranchised, feels further misunderstood, feels helpless, and feels more of a victim than ever. And if he stays in that psychological state for any long period of time because the abuse is constant, he will begin to believe it. Which means that the sadist would have won in destroying the person. Destroying the ego and the personality that comes with it. And make him something else that he feels he needs to be rather than the God-given right for him to be himself. 
because sadists uh, want to change people. They want to change people and mold them into what they feel they should be because the sadist has a vision of what the person should be. And this can happen very, very subtly. I'll give you another example. You are a mother. No, no. I already gave a, a, a mother example. Let me give a father example. Let's say the father wants the son to go to Cargany Mellon because that's where he went to school. The son is a great artist, a great designer. But Cargany Mellon, if you know, Cargany Mellon is his school of business. So that should not be the place for someone who's a designer or an artist. It should be FIT. It should be Fashion Industries. It should be a wonderful college or university that is a premiere of design all over the world. And it's only found in New York, New York City. But the father doesn't care about that. He wants him to follow in tradition. And the father says him, if you don't choose my alma mater, you're cut off. Isn't that a sadomasochistic relationship? The father acting as a sadist and the young man aspiring to go to college, about to become a man at the prime of his life is not giving a sucker punch because now he has to be something that he cannot be. And parents don't mean to do this, but they do it. Well, they inflict their own values on their children. They want them children to do this and do that and to fall into the footsteps of God. And the child might not be. How many young men have committed suicide or put guns into their heads because their fathers don't approve of them only if they become a replica of the fathers? Something that went on in the 1950s. What was the play of James Dean about? It was about that. Or Cat and a Hot Tin Roof where the father didn't communicate with the son, with Biff, or Paul Newman, played by Paul Newman. That right there was a cinematicistic relationship, and yet the father truly loved his son, but he wasn't a communicator. Like, I had a father like that. He provided everything to Biff, like my father did. And the more he gave me, the more I resented him, because there was no emotional exposition. You didn't know who the person was. The person was selfish. They did not allow others in. That also is a sadomasochistic pathology. Because then what happened in the, the, the uh, Cat and a Hot Tin Roof, if you read the play or saw the movie with Elizabeth Taylor, what happened to Biff? It was destroying the family. And this man was still in denial, still refusing to talk and dying. So he was torturing himself. Sadomasochism directed to himself. The move that the, the play it won a Pulitzer for a reason. It, it, it shows so many of these variances within the story. You know, Tennessee Williams was a brilliant playwright because he shows how these dynamics can get worse and morph into something else. And it can start out very simple. The children that killed the, the, the Menendez brothers who killed their parents. You know that big case in Massachusetts? I think it was in Massachusetts or California, or California, the Menendez brothers. They killed their parents over money. But what set the tone? See, then this is where it gets crazy, sadistic. So that is an example of that. Take a little pause, look at my notes and make a reflection. One of the things that I know is public information that I can talk about that they will allow me to talk about is that when you make more than $10 million in Hollywood, the Illuminati approaches you. And it's always a frightening prospect when they do. And they want you to join. It can be a frightening experience, let me tell you. No one wants to deal with the dark and the occult in that way. But nonetheless, they are approached. And they have, uh, and if they don't join, they could run the risk of, you know, this is what they say, right? And there's a certain truth to it. Oh, they'll try, to, they'll try to kill you, you know, or your career but only will go but so far. 
because they are not, you are not submitting to them. This occurred with 50 cents. 50 cents was approached by the Illuminati to join. And he said no. And you know, the people were telling him, oh, you gotta be careful, you gotta be careful, these people can kill you. You know what he said? Kill me then. Fuck y'all. Kill me then. That's 50 cents. So they, these people will tell you that they, they, you get approached. The more money you have, the more power. It, it's 666 for a reason. If they come, you know, except that you have the black lodges and you have the white lodges. See, I belong to the white lodges. But you have those that belong to the black lodges. And that I cannot talk about because they're both two sides of the same coin. One is to elevate and advance society, and one is to suppress and destroy. And in this great cosmic sense, there lies a balance. They call it positive evil. You have positive evil and you have negative evil. Positive evil is when you kill a cow and you eat it, and you take the skin and you make coats and gloves. Negative evil is when you kill that same cow, eat it, but leave everything to waste. The Native American Indians use every single part of a cow or an animal or bison when they kill it. Every, even the hair, even the teeth, they use it. Nothing is laid to waste. That's positive evil. Oh no, this, there, there are terms that define these things. It's, this is not just coming from my head. So understand that um, we can have a sadomasochistic pathology or relationship with nature. And this is another example. You have the positive way and then you have the negative way. Man, so much to fucking say, and, and, and it's already 21, 22 minutes. Um, da, 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 da. Okay, I need to read you the thought patterns that the uh, masochist usually engages in. Okay, and, and the thought pattern that he engages in is uh, three types. I have been made to feel guilty and I am angry because of it. So I want to hurt others and make others feel the guilt, the, make them feel as guilty or as bad as I do. And I will hurt others first before I myself get hurt. That's one thought process. The second thought process is, I want to make others atone for their mistakes or sins. I want to humiliate others so that I will so that I will humiliate myself. Now that's, that's kind of crazy. I want to humiliate others so that I can humiliate myself. That's deep. So by humiliating somebody else, you're also humiliating yourself. That's a very pathological way to think. The third brain wave of thinking with the sadist is by punishing others for their imperfections, mistakes or sins, I am punishing myself. Because the sadist sees himself as an extension of that person. So by hurting that person, he feels that he's atoning for his own inadequacies because then he reflects them on the other person. It's crazy. It's crazy. Okay, these are the examples. Um, these three Thought patterns will create a circumstantial, there's that word again, circumstantial reality that is defined in essence by a, pol a polarity of organic behaviors reflecting a punishment reward system. And this punishment reward system um, takes place in a, in a variety of examples. Uh, one is dominance and submission. The other one is master and slave. The other one is superior and inferior. And the other one is the victor and the vanquished. The reality of this couple will reflect a circumstantial reality of the examples given. Okay? So, and that is a lot to say. You know, the dominance submission can happen with inequality of ages or inequality of race or culture, not knowing the language, not understanding, and therefore, uh, or someone who's rich and someone who's poor will be the superior inferior or could be intellectually inferior than the person who is infer uh, inferior. 
um, could be more, it could be intellectual as well, is what I'm saying, this kind of dichotomy or inequality. Then the victim, the vanquished, something like playing chess, where the victor feels that he's the victor, he vanquishes the one who uh, is playing chess. And we're out of time, we're going to have to do a part um, seven.